fifth successive season, the ladies European and LPGA tours have come together in the beautiful scenic surroundings of Scotland. The home of golf, our home this week, as one of the biggest events of the season reaches its conclusion. And for the first time, we're at Dunbarney Links on the East Coast, just south of St Andrews. This is one of Scotland's newest layouts that looks as though it's been around for years, winning rave reviews from the world's finest female players. Positioned along a mile and a half of golden sandy beaches, the layout's elevated tees show off the wonderful panoramic views. And a fantastic final day in store. From Soto Grande to Scotland, Ashley Buhai with the opportunity to find that winning feeling for the second successive week. Thai teen sensation and the current number one on the ladies' European tour, Atia Titikun, right there again, as she always seems to be. So home cup star Charlie Hull is playing some of the best golf of her life and hoping to reap the rewards. Ryan O'Toole putting on a ball striking masterclass on day three. The American looking for a breakthrough win. And there's 2018 Women's Scottish Open champion Eri Jatanagan hoping to stay on course for victory number three this campaign. This is what they're hoping to get their hands on, this Women's Scottish Open trophy. It's a three-way tie at the top with three major champions on the first page of this leaderboard and as many as 24 players starting the last day within six shots of the lead. Hello, welcome to the final round of the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open, a new title sponsor at a new venue, Dunbarney Links. Designed by former Ryder Cup player Clive Clark, it opened just last spring. It's a par 72 playing just under 6,500 yards today. It really has provided a fabulous backdrop to this co-sanctioned event. I'm Richard Kaufman. Alongside me is former Ladies European Tour player Sophie Walker. Sophie, I think we're in for a bit of a day, don't you? Aren't we just? The leaderboard is amazing. The golf course, the players are really enjoying and they've played it a couple of times now this week and they're wide fairways but you've got some decisions to make off the tee so now they're learning what lines to take. They can really take advantage of this golf course and that wind, there's hardly any today. It's the westerly wind which is 80% of the time that is the wind direction. The players are getting used to the conditions but there'll be some low scoring due to that wind drop. And the scoring, well, it's been fantastic. You look at the top three names on the leaderboard, they've all played the front nine in just 31 shots. Ryan O'Toole, it's been a long time coming, but she's given herself a chance of that breakthrough win on the LPGA Tour. Atia Titikan, the number one player on the Ladies European Tour, of course a win here would make her an LPGA Tour player for the rest of the season. We know what Lydia Ko has been doing this year, bronze medal, breakthrough win. Charlie Hull set back with that bogey at the ninth hole and Eric Jatanagant well, really just hasn't got going so far this weekend but all to play for over the back nine at Dunbarney Lynx. Just a word on Whitney Hillier. Sophie, I mean, for her to shoot that 65 today and get herself into the Women's Open next week. Yeah, it's massive for her. And I'm really pleased that she decided not to go to Spain. She didn't want to get caught out with track and trace, which is a big decision to miss a big money Ladies European Tour event and settle. I want to really concentrate on the Scottish Open. And, and that she has done. Yeah, big start. At the moment, heading for her first top 10 of the season in an event, don't forget, that's got a prize fund of $1.5 million. Here's Jasmine Suwanapura. Pins back right today on the 12th. You can really start to hear the noise of the ball landing on the greens. They're firming up. I like it when it gets like that. That's how I like to play golf too. Uh, I don't like what I call plop golf where the ball lands and spins back. Yeah, I, I heard someone was talking about it yesterday that, that there's not been any pitch marks on the greens. No, they're firm enough and Lynx really should be. It's uh, traditionally the way Lynx, which started probably 600 yards ago, they are the original type of golf. And um, 
In fact, the old course of Sandals is over 600 years old. This is where Jatanagan's problem started yesterday. Found one up into the wind down the right-hand side and found this fairway bunker. Decided to go with her two iron today. It's interesting how she used to, when she was right at the top of her game, play hands off the tee and now she's come back to using the driver quite a bit uh, and hitting an iron there makes it a very long par four you really need to get down close to the burn and you've still got a shot of probably the best part of 200 yards I think with, with the wind direction over the past few days Clive, I think the players have been so scared of running out we've seen a lot by that bridge because they catch the down slope Charlie didn't she, she actually was literally on the edge of the bridge on day one it's a 315 yard run out on the left hand side. It deceives you because you, you say, hey, I've got over 300 yards here, and I probably hit it, probably the longer hit is on average for about 270, 280, a bit longer on a Lynx course. But the last 40 yards is down a gentle gradient, and of course the ball runs that much further. This is Suwanapura, and this is my ball getting a little closer closer to the flag. Yeah, the 12th has got that little backstop there that just fed it back down the slope. Natalia Titikun doesn't make her birdie at 10. And, yeah. Well, another one of those testers coming back. So, Clive, uh, I know you're going to go in and out and enjoy the action. What? what Dare I ask you a prediction or, I mean, I suppose the, the best thing for you, I suppose, is that everyone's been talking so positively about the golf course. Well, that's wonderful. That's uh, music in the ears, of course. Okay. Um, I, I think, actually, these short two par fours that are drivable today may well decide the championship. Yeah, 11 playing at 299 yards, the 17th, 266. Yes, he's playing a little shorter. I think yesterday it was about 3.17. So yeah, they they've pushed moved the tee. up a tee, yeah, which is fun, because we hopefully will see a few eagles there, which is always exciting. First, the players need to negotiate this difficult par 4 tenth. It's quite exposed there. It's going to be the strongest the wind will have felt on this front line here into the left hand side because of the bunkers that guard the flag I think the breeze has just picked up a little in the latter part of the afternoon but there are no white seahorses on the um, further forth which is a good clue that it's not blowing hard 60 feet for Buhai Obviously, we're talking about your course design. Clive, there was a time when uh, sitting in TV commentary boxes and out of the course was your bread and butter as well. What's it like being back and doing a little bit of TV? Well, it's lovely. I worked for the BBC. I worked every live event for 18 years with uh, Peter Ellis and Harry Carpenter and uh, Bruce Critchley, Alex Hay. Which, it was a lot of fun, I tell you. Um, but California is rather a long way from the uh, European tour. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, thanks so much for providing this backdrop for us this week at the Trust Golf uh, Women's Scottish Open and enjoy the, uh, enjoy the final round. Thank you. Looking forward to watching more. Thanks for having me in. Great pleasure and uh, working with you has been terrific. Yeah. Thank you. Great company. Clive Clark there, former Ryder Cup, uh, course, course designer of Dunbarney Lynx. Anna Norquist, one of those who hasn't been able to, to push on today. Incredibly slow, straight back up the slope. She wasn't quite surprised to even see her ball finish where it did. Just reading the Greens book there. I know you've got one as well. Yeah, they're, uh, they're good for commentating. They're quite full on. The players really study them. I know Bryson DeChambeau is a keen Green book user. It's a reasonably flat part of this green on the 10th. Colin 
down a spine. If anything, I would favour the right half of this hole. Well, that's a big moment for Buhai, and you think it's a big moment as well coming up for Titikan. We know that she's had some problems with putts of around four or five feet. We saw that in Evian when she was in contention to win, of course, her first major. And she's left herself one of these right at the start of the back nine here in this final round. Well, these are the type of putts that you need to hold, don't you, if you're going to get that first win on the LPGA Tour. It's just about settle in the nerves and try not to think about where you are just do your normal routine like you would on the practice ground back at home just let the putter flow yeah there that was go. the stutter wasn't it took yeah. that little second longer to take the club back and it was just a little stutter as it started back on the stroke she does so many things right I mean it's been incredible consistency from her this year this is her 10th event she's only ever been outside the top six once in that run on the LPGA LET but if there has been a nemesis for her it has been that length putt so Anapura obviously not having a great day but a, a nice birdie to get her back to six under Which is, of course, where Norquist stands as well. We have to say, you know, Titikun missing there, and Charlie Hull with the drop shot at the previous hole. Things looking positive right now for Ryan O'Toole, aren't they? Yeah, they're looking very good. I mean, you can start five under for that front line. Couldn't have dreamt of any better. Chipping up there ain't bad, is it? Yeah, but I say, if it's short, it's chipping up there ain't bad, is it? Long way back on the 10th for Charlie Hill. She hybrid off the tee, remember, so she's got even more loft in her, uh, less loft in her hand now. Over 200 yards. anything right it's probably the thickest part of rough on the golf course to the right hand side of that green and there's a bunker waiting for you also leading by two shots now Really nicely, no tall. It's a similar length put to Buhai. Really good pin on the 11th, it's right at the front of the green. You can use the backstop behind the pin and bring it back. Yeah, there options galore, isn't there? It's 290 yards to the front. You think, oh, I could have a sneaky go at this. Jitanagan's found, found a little divot on the fairway here, so she's having to play this second. Not from the perfect light. the slope you can't quite get a right strike when you're coming out of an 
old divot, you can't quite get the compression on the back of the golf ball. Maybe just caught a bit of turf before the ball. Yeah, bunched up at seven under par. Boutier is another one, like Marina Alex on that, also trying to use that backstop. Leanna Maguire, by the way, has just birdied the uh, 14th hole. She's at seven under now as well. What a season she's having. Currently just outside the top 50 on the Rolex rankings. Well, it's going to be an exciting back nine, that's for sure. Experienced player at the top, but one who hasn't yet won on the LPGA Tour. Over 200 events she's played as well. But what a position, what a round it's been so far from Ryan O'Toole. And that setback from Titikun, the three pad at 10, leaves her with a two shot lead. Lydia Ko, along with Charlie Ho and Eri Jatanagan, now for a drift. hole it's 290 yards to the front of this green but anything down the left hand side there's bunkers waiting for you so the players really do have to carry it 250 yards to make sure that you miss them <coughs> go back to the tenth hole while we wait for Titican. Yeah, just needed something like that to fall, didn't she, uh, Aira Jatanaga? Of course, this is the first of uh, two weeks in Scotland for the best on the LPGA Tour, Ladies European Tour. It's not a long trip either up the East Coast to... Uh, Carnoustie, and of course Lydia Cote will be amongst the favourites. Chipping this from just off the green, and uh, well, she'll get there eventually. Yeah, sure, both of those. Now, <laughs> bit of a putt down the slope coming up for Charlie Hull. And you'll get these at Dunbarney. Left to right, downhill, the last kind of 20 feet. Judged it really well. Well, that was important, especially after what had happened at the last green where she charged it five, six feet past and missed the putt back. And, you know, she'll relish the fact that there's two drivable par fours, two reachable par fives to come over this closing stretch. There's a lot of golf to come, isn't there? Oh, yeah, there is. And, and she'll be aware that Ryan O'Toole hasn't won. You know, there's a bit of pressure now that she has that two-shot lead. Birdie put just moved left on Alex. It's a shame. One of the strongest parts of her game. Whenever she does miss a putt inside 20 feet, she's fuming at herself. These are the type of puts that when you are in the lead, sort of requiring some feel in the hands if you are nervous. It's easy to leave these type of puts short, right to left. Well, there's a tester. It wasn't bad for pace, was it? Just uh, let's judge the line a little bit.
just a par and 11 for Lydia Ko. Nico Tour, five under for the day. Flat the back of the 12th green. And straight in the middle. It's her first birdie of mm -hmm. the back nine takes her to minus eight. Well, these are must makes now, aren't they, for Eric Tanaga? Does make. She wants to have the title she won at Gallant with one here at Dunbarney Licks. So she was so proud to win on Lynx Golf Course. She uh, of won the Women's Open, but that was at Woburn, a Parkland Treeland Golf Course. That was in 2016. Her Scottish Open title came in 2018. Bogey on the card so far today, Ryan O'Toole. The tenth hole is, well, has been the hardest hole on the golf course. No surprise that she has this four-footer for her par. Well, the last time she had a bogey was the tenth hole yesterday. Left at the end. Nervous. So far, so good. And she's in a good place, you know. We saw her partner, Gemma, sitting there cheering her on. I'm not sure if that's who she's waving at over there, but she's in a good place off the course. She's certainly in a good place on it, top of the leaderboard. Yeah, looks very good, doesn't she? Total control. Looks like there's only those two on the golf course at the moment. As we watch Titikin going for it on the 11th. 290 to the front edge, must carry it 250. And does so. Oh, now, don't go too much. Oh, it's going to stay on the top level. Still a pretty straight shot for a driver, isn't it? Just 20 feet left of the flag. within the 5,000 acre Balcarres estate, property that's been in the hands of uh, Lord Balniel's family for more than 400 years. Whose hands are going to be on this, though? The Truscoff Women's Scottish Open title. Well, we know who the favourite is right now. It's Ryan O'Toole. But she's got Atia Titikun, the uh, teenage tyre sensation. She's got Lydia Coe and Eri Jatanaga, and of course, major champions, and one of Britain's best in Charlie Hull looking to uh, try and capitalise if she does make any mistakes, but it's O'Toole right now by two. I'd like to say uh, waiting patiently for us to uh, introduce him is uh, Paul Bush from uh, Visit Scotland. Paul, very good afternoon to you again. Good afternoon, Richard. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, it's turning into a great afternoon of golf, isn't it? And uh, once again, the backdrop of Scotland is always a joy and it's uh, it's producing a five cha fine championship. Absolutely, and I think everyone's been delighted with this uh, golf course and the fact we've come here for the first time this year and we've seen some stunning golf. Well, there's another example yeah. there from, from Anna Norquist. Hopefully pop that in, she could do with a, a birdie. Certainly brought a smile to her face. She's got a caddy there from Scotland. She's got a husband from Dundee. So there's, you know, maybe Claimer is one of your own. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Anna's loves playing in Scotland, and uh, you know, remember a couple of years ago at the Solheim at Glen Eagles, she was part of that winning team. And uh, I was saying to Sophie last night, not many weeks away, and we'll be back on the Solheim Road again. Although this time in Inverness in uh, the USA, which is a Scottish-sounding name in Absolutely, itself, isn't it? Yes, Inverness yeah. Golf Club. Let's hope Katrina can bring the trophy back for the second time. Yeah, you would think Anna Norquis would be there. We have seventh successive Solheim Cup just outside the automatic spots as well how much how important are these two weeks to scotland and golf in scotland you know here for the trust golf women's scottish open then next week for the aig women's open i think they're absolutely priceless i mean 
we're the only country in the world that can claim to have that. Um, I think as we've seen over the last few years, this field's got better and better year on year. We hope to continue to grow that, you know, over the next few years. Um, and obviously the week before the, the Women's British Open is, a, is, is the jewel in the crown in terms of the calendar from a British perspective. So it's, uh, it's important that we maintain that investment. Yeah, well, it's fantastic that, as you say, we have the calibre of field that we've got. Obviously, I've got more things I want to ask you, but Sophie first, this this part here, she needs a, a certain touch. You do. You need to imagine that the hole is actually 12 feet short of where it is because you can see that slope, get it to the top of that slope and then let it die towards the hole and move left to right. Eagle, don't forget. It's really good. She got that perfect. You think you're in the final, well, in the final group, second to last group, you're right up there. You can't afford to be bold with that and hit it too far past. She couldn't have done any better. The only way that gets closer is if it actually goes into the hole. She's still got another one of those putts though, <laughs> which is starting to worry me watching her because everything else she does, she just seems to glide through. But those pressure putts, that's noticed it first at Evian a few weeks ago. Saw a little bit of it in Northern Ireland, certainly seeing some of it here. I'm not a massive fan of green books from inside kind of four feet. I think then it's because it's so much about pace when you're hitting it that close. I get it from a, a long way back or maybe hitting into the greens. This is for Birdie, for, for Buhai, as we watch her putt as well. Worth pointing out, of course, you know, we're co-sanctioned this week, Ladies European Tour, LPJ Tour, and of course it was only just recently announced the Men's Scottish Open has has got that thing going on now as well. Oh, incredibly exciting for Scottish golf. Um, but I, I think the special thing about this week and, and just being out on the course this afternoon, you know, biomechanically, these women are absolutely superb, you know, and I think as a very poor male golfer, I've got much more empathy with their game than actually trying to emulate what the men do. Um, and they're just a joy to watch. Uh, but, but having two co-sanctioned events in Scotland starting next year is... Um, something really important just catches the right edge nicely held from ashley buhai what a couple of weeks she's having after lifting a trophy last week in santa grande up to nine under par now second birdie of the day of course you got to play with georgia hall didn't you the other day yeah george is a lovely girl and obviously my fiance on the bag harry um you know we've got some fond memories from solheim a couple of years ago at glen eagles i guess she'll be disappointed with this week but um as a previous winner of next week's event, she'll go there and look to try and obviously put a name on the trophy next week at Carnoustie. Well, here's a possible contender here at Dunbarney Links. Lydia Co sets herself up with a birdie chance. Now this, another pressure putt this time for birdie for Titicum. OK, the lead's back to one. Got a bit of a fan club out there, I think. Every time that she's teed it up, she's gathered more and more fans. The players on the LET absolutely love Atia as well. She's great to be around. She's got such a lovely attitude, hasn't she? She's got an attitude that you, you know, of an 18-year-old. She has great fun, lives her life on social media like most of the teenagers do. I'm struggling opening that bottle of water. Might need to go to the gym a bit more. <laughs> And an awkward for her birdie and gets her back to seven under. So, of course, things are starting to open up now uh, as well, Paul. Uh, we noticed for ourselves there was a bit of nightlife where we're staying in Dundee on a Saturday. I think that's the first time that's happened in a long time. Yes, it's, 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 you know, it's a real relief, I think, for you know, everybody in society, but also particularly for Scottish tourism and Scottish golf tourism, where we've really struggled this last 18 months. And uh, you know, I was talking to Clive, who we've had on recently in the last few minutes, and, and the forward bookings for this course next year, particularly internationally, are absolutely fantastic. So I think it's real credit to the work they've done here, and hopefully lots more people can enjoy these great Lynx uh, courses. Absolutely, the area. Down the bunker, didn't she? The cross bunker here yesterday. It's right on her number. She needs to carry it 250. Oh, a 
again, again. Well, she made a great par in the end here yesterday, but uh, lightning strikes twice, I'm afraid, for Eri Jatanaga. If only she had a driver. Yeah, I just keep thinking it. This hole is it's just one of those you need to get the ball high in the air so it can ride the wind and, and carry those bunkers, which is exactly what we'll see Charlie Hull do, just being able to tee the driver up and get a bit of launch on it. There he is, a lot more of a, a chaser ball flight at the moment. There. I'm not sure where that was. Uh, I understand Rhino Tool laid up off the tee as well. Are you surprised at that, Sophie? Well, she's been saying about she's once not too aggressive with her lines. That's what she wants. She wants to be positive with her swings, but doesn't want to overdo it with the, the lines and take something on. And she's obviously committing to that as well. We see this pin, it's, it's very accessible if you choose to, to lay up. But maybe if you go through the back of the green, we've seen how hard that, that shot is from the top tier. You let me know. Par 3, 15th, as we're seeing. Driver ball 11. Couple of par fives coming up here, 13 and 15. A real chance for some movement on the leaderboard. And that's beautifully played by No. We've seen some big drives at this 12th hole. Yeah, average 3.05 yesterday for the field. Watch the kick. As soon as this ball lands, if it does land on the fairway, it chases down there. On the left-hand side, though, she scooted past it, luckily. Bunker 260 yards off the tee, so it's in their minds. Lydia Coat. Oscar away from a sixth birdie of this final round from the charging Kiwi. So, Paul, you, you sort of hinted at it when you first came in, the Scottish Government and, and the funding for this event as well. It seems like in for the long haul, really, here. Absolutely. I mean, we've just committed both to the men's and the women's event for the next five years, and um, I think it's really important to do that on the back of hosting Ryder Cup and Solheim Cup. But... You know, we show we don't spend any money on golf marketing in Scotland. We spend our money through events, and I think you know the pictures that you'll see in the states today will entice Americans to come across hopefully next summer. And you wouldn't believe this golf course it opened as it says on that graphic 2020. It's you know, less than 18 months old. It, it's quite spectacular. And you you've had the privilege to speak to Clive Clark this afternoon. I spoke to him last night, and he's very modest about what's been achieved here. But um, it really is pretty special. See, it's not often that you get a golf course which is so good and the views on top it's normally one or the other but the turf here it's proper lynx turf and so much of it is built on sand well there's where rhino two will lead up to and, and you get the you wonder why uh, i don't know i suppose if eric clears the bunker then you know i suppose it's it, it's job done, but given the fact that she went in that bunker yesterday, you said it's right on on the number. Why she didn't adopt the O'Toole strategy and just lay up? She could make birdie from there. Exactly. It is. It's, she just can't seem to flight that three wood high enough to get it over the bunker, and obviously it is less club. <coughs> 70 yards for Ryan O'Toole. We're looking to land it. Maybe 72 and bring it back down from the slope. It's OK. Well, she's got a, a lead to predict now. This is, this is even harder than yesterday. Yeah, 
look at the stance. She's on her tiptoes on that left foot. Just well to actually get a decent contact. You can see the left foot moving all over the place there. Yeah, sometimes you wonder whether it's going to be your day. You know, she found a divot off the tee at the last hole. She's right up against the, the lip of the bunker there at this hole. She's going to have to try and make it up and down to avoid another drop shot. We haven't seen anything of Kelsey McDonald today, have we? And what to play for for her. Yeah, looking to be the top Scottish player this week. It's an eagle attempt. It's down the hill. Keep on coming. Yeah, the Jock McVicker leading Scott trophy. Of course, Jock has been to you know so many of the Scottish Opens over the years, hasn't he, Paul? So a lovely touch to name the leading Scott trophy after him. I think it's very special that that trophy is in, in his memory. And uh, he was one of these guys that we all saw year after year after year and uh, gave some great service to golf. See this hole, you go for the go for it off the tee, and if it doesn't come off, it's quite a bit hard to then get that second shot close. Lovely little par four, it really makes you think. There you go, you were questioning Ryan O'Toole off the tee, Richard, and she's in the best spot so far. Absolutely. Yeah, Charlie Hall just missing out on that ridge. Now this is for Eagle for no. Good try. We'll take her to nine under par, which is in seventh place. Had a 66, by the way, just now from Gabby Lopez. She's just finished with a couple of birdies. So the Mexican right now tied for 10th. Another one of those that came straight from Tokyo. Of course, she was the flag bearer for Mexico, wasn't she, at the opening ceremony? Yeah, what an honour that must have been. I decided not to go to Tokyo. She won last week on the Ladies' European Tour. Another good week this week, just coming up shy on 12. That's a good couple of clubs short. Seems a bit perplexed. That's a delightful touch. She made a good up and down for par at the last hole. Yeah, good chance Eri Chitanagan could do the same there at 11. Or further up at 12. The plays have got a lot longer in than in the past few days. The wind is in the same direction, but it's nowhere near as strong. This is a 436-yard par four, coming in with more of a medium to longer iron. So, Paul, it's nice to see it. You know, we've had a mixture of the weather, but we had the strong winds, the sun's out today, the birdies are falling in. This is going to take a bit of touch from Charlie Holt. But uh, I think once again, we're in for a really good finish to this Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open. Absolutely. I think the next couple of hours will be really exciting. Thanks so much, uh, Thank obviously, you. for Visit Scotland's contribution. Thanks for joining us as well. Thanks very much. And Paul Bish there from uh, Visit Scotland. That's Charlie Holt. Leaves herself a tester for par. Up ahead to 12 with Titikin. Looks to be a OK lie in the rough. Trying to get one down the left-hand side and chase it up. Another player coming down the right. This green kind of sits away from you. You hit across the green. So if that would have hit the left, going straight at the flag, the carry is a lot longer. Well, it's only 299 yards, but Jatanagar and Hull with work to do to come away with their par fours. Rhino Tools lead back down to one after Titikin birded this hole. 25 feet, it's back into the slope. It's going to move a little bit left to right off the slope that we can see behind her. Looking at the scoreboard in front of me, I've just seen Anna Ewing has made an eagle two at the driver ball 17th, and she's eight under for the round. Kelsey McDonald here to get 
to yeah, good. six under, and she makes it. And uh, she's one of those as well, Sorry. like Whitney Hillier, who's in the spots right now to take one of those five places for the Women's Open that's up for grab at this tournament. Charlie did push it off the tee. She did go for this green from the bunker, and now it's, it's three feet for her par four. second hold we thought she was going to get something going and it's been steady since but there are still chances out there and she won't be backing off she'll be trying to take advantage of the short par fours and going for these par fives Four in the end from that tee shot. Oh, she's still smiling. She's always smiling, isn't she, Harriet Jatanagar? Oh, nice to see the sun out. It's picture perfect, you have to say. You see that flag flapping a little bit, but... I have to say this is very good golf. New dishes. Buhai's come out of the bunker. You see Titica not quite in the sand. Well, that's a sandy lie. Yeah, you're just a little bit unsure of what's it like underneath the golf ball. It looks like it's on green grass. So and it might not be as bare underneath as it could be. It can get quite a lot of spin sometimes when the sandy lies. Previous events this season on the LPGA Tour. Atia Titikan, second at the LPGA Tour event in, in Thailand, where she needed a birdie to force a playoff, and the hooter sounded on the 18th tee. She had to wait an hour to play it, only made par. Lydia Ko, 205 to the front of this par 5, 13th. Golf shot. She's got that for Eagle to get to 12 under par. Well, Lydia Ko has made a final day charge here at Dambani Links. Of course, uh, a winner early this year back in that winner's circle in Hawaii at the Lodi Championships. She comes here from Tokyo with that bronze medal equal chance to get herself uh, within two shots of the lead but Ryan O'Toole looking so solid looking for that breakthrough title uh, lead right now is one over Titikun although the tie has a tester to come at 12. it's been from her today I think it's a, a round of golf that will officially secure her place on Pat Hurst American Solheim Cup team four birdies on the front nine three birdies and an eagle on the back nine as she comes down 18 we'll pop back to that Titicum putt at 12 par put 10 feet
be a smile on her face. That's how important that save is on the 12th. Easiest hole on the golf course. Green hole and Henselite walks off with her birdie. Was, uh, number one player on the ladies European tour in 2019 after she won in Kenya now uh, here is uh, the aforementioned Ali Ewing and that is a new course record nine under par round of 63 from Ali Ewing 11 under par the clubhouse target I mean you wouldn't think it's going to be good enough, but still, some performance from the American. Yeah, it was, and, and it'll get the players thinking that you know, she's made eagle at 17, she's birdie 18. 18 was really difficult yesterday. I just didn't hit it. So whereas yesterday the likes of Jatanagan and Titicum finished bogey bogey, you'd be thinking, hello, there's a chance to, to get a few back on 17 and 18 today. And in case you're wondering why I'm saying it secures a place on the Solheim Cup team because she started the week third on the points list. She's heading for something like a top five finish here. Come down off the slope nicely for Kelsey McDonald. It's having a look. Oh, oh. And she's just birded 13. I'm nearly give her that one on 14 also. goes. Just the 500 spectators allowed in for this event, of course, at Carnoustie next week. 8,000 spectators allowed to see the fifth and final major of the season. Twelve in the final three ball. Charlie has to carry all the way back to this pin. He's got to play almost the full yardage because of those bunkers you can see. Adam Woodward was asking her to hit it, to keep it left of that flag and catch the slope. Thirteenth, Titicum striping one with the driver. Yeah, runs out of fairway down there, and she's found that grassy mound, and just needs the luck of a good lie as O'Toole sends her second on its way. Oh, it's another stunner! Get a really long, long shot off the twelfth. Just to have a wedge in there, really taking advantage of it. First player we've seen kind of. Getting a little bit of spin coming into the 12th. Oh, 
she's smiling. She's well, striding as it stands to a victory. Here's one of the players that maybe could deny her. Eagle Park for Lydia Ko. Down the hill. Maybe showed a little too much respect given the speed, but she is six under for the day. This is an encouraging performance as well for her ahead of what she faces next week at Carnoustie. Well, they're having some fun down the beach, aren't they? A little family trip. Yeah, Lydia said earlier this week she was looking forward to going to Carnoustie because it's uh, sort of the last one that she didn't play because of course her first women's open came in 2012 the last time the women's open was played at Carnoustie was 2011 it's great to play on these historic golf courses and these players exactly what they want to do play the likes of St Andrews <laughs> Canoosty, Troon last year. <laughs> We're golf geeks just like everybody else back home watching. So she's telling it, it's been quiet. That's the best way to describe this round of golf. There is time, but she's going to have to start making a few of these putts just to Ryan O'Toole knows she's still hanging around. Downhill to start, a little bit left to right. It's only right to left from where she is. It doesn't look like there's a purpose today. Well, she said her game isn't where she wants it to be. If you saw her scoring last week at the uh, Tokyo Olympics, started with a 77. She struggled over the weekend at Evian as well. So she was actually surprised to see herself in the position she was. McDonald makes it back-to-back -back birdies, and she is now looking assured of the spot in next week's Women's Open at Carnoustie. At the moment, the players looking good are her, Carolyn Lampert, Whitney Hillier, and uh, Heidi Kang, who shot a 66 today. Left to right, 25 feet for Charlie Hall for birdie. Mm. Well, there are low scores out there. Charlie Ho and Eri Jatanagan are both just one under par for their round. Of course, they were two of the three co-leaders overnight. But we've seen what Ada Ewing's done. Course record 63. And Ryan O'Toole, Lack Lydia Ko and Atia Titikun are all five under for their round. But there could be even more progress here for the tournament leader. Michael Curry there just helping out with where he feels the uh, the putt's coming from. It's a bit of an experience on the back, Michael. He's won a few events, caddying for various players. He's been on the bag of Emily Pedersen, has a harder moon off. Been around a long time. This for birdie number six of the day for the American. They've got it an inch left to right. And that's exactly where she hit it. It wasn't a bad putt, that was a bad read. No, I think you prefer that as a player though. You've hit it exactly where you want to. Exactly, it was a good putt. Well, she's heading off to uh, Carnoustie, obviously. She was already qualified, but she actually had to miss last year's Women's Open because, because of COVID. 
did uh, Ryan O'Toole. He tested positive. All depends on the lie here, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's 200 yards to the front edge. 225. I can see a bit of the ball there, doesn't it? Too bad. Oh, there's a bit of a lump of grass behind it on the right, which would want to turn the club over down the left-hand side, and that's not where you need to be. Ball above her feet, so the ball will want to move left. That's where you need to be, just keep it down that right hand side. Do not want to turn the club face over. You can see all the bunkers and the you're just unsure what the rough's like down the left-hand side and you're hitting back up onto the green. Well, she's obviously hitting the ball further than she uh, expects to have run out of fairway there. I, mean, I think a lot of players are almost taking the risk on now. See, Anna Norkvist has found this little bit of fairway down the left-hand side. It's got the hybrid out. Got to carry it all the way back to this flag. straight at it, it's a comfortable hitting the 200 yard shot. Look back down that fairway and just see the narrow gap just on the right hand side that the players are taking on. So the run out to the mound is 250 yards straight down and in the middle of this fairway on the 13th. Ryan O'Toole with the honour. Right. Well, we've not seen her miss anything yet, have we? I mean, that is perfect. I mean... It's the same length as Titikun's, but she's found that little stripe of fairway down the left-hand side. Everything at the moment she's doing is just going right. Honestly, it's, it's I don't even know if it's 20 yards wide. It's, it's tiny, but this is the experience that you get from playing Dunbarney Links. You realise that it's worth taking on. There's no point in hitting the hybrid and laying up because then you can't get there in two. So you might as well push it with the driver. Or the three-wood, as the case may be, if you're Harry Jatanagan. Freewood for Hull. You know whose clubs those are, don't you? Incredible precision. All three of those tee shots. Well, it's a bit of a gap, isn't it, right now from uh, Charlie Holt, Eri Jatanagan, and their playing partner for the afternoon, Ryan O'Toole. Suwanapura playing for places. Making birdie. Of course, Rhino Tour was a, a captain's pick for the 2011 Solheim Cup. She was a huge surprise as a captain's pick. I wonder if she's uh, putting on a performance here after a couple of top 20s at Evian and at the ISBS Handel World Invitational. Whether she's going to suddenly be on Pat Hurst's radar as well. 
course, a long way to go before she can think about winning this Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open. It's a one-shot advantage she has over the teenage tie, Atia Titigal. This is Titican. Had to lay up. Plenty of green to work with that slope. We see shouldn't be in play. Spin that she got there. Lovely tight fairways. I walked to the green. Davis out there watching. She is, of course, a vice captain to Katrina Matthew. Esther Henselide and Bronte Law are, are out there. The nice captain. Of course, uh, Laura actually made the cut. She uh, shot a... I don't know if you want me to say this, but she did shoot a 77 today. But she uh, is around at the weekend. So, back to the action. All the spectators were said allowed in, only 500, but of course, uh, all the marshals can watch as well. Exactly the same part as Lydia Co faced. It's quick, the first half. A little bit flatter towards the hole and we'll move to the left. Oh. And she started the day within a, two shots of the lead and an awkward. Suffered a couple of droughts in her career after winning twice in 2009. Went five years without a win. And then went on a spell where she couldn't stop winning. Now it's four years, of course, since her eighth and last LPGA Tour title. This is a really good look for Bu High. It's back up the hill. anything this year that the putter's been cold. It's normally a strength of Ashley's game. It's started to come together the last few weeks. It's such patience and smoothness to her stroke. Yeah, I think she's one of those today that would like to have seen the wind up again. She's worked with uh, Dunwood for 11 years now and she says that He's taught her so many of the shots over the years that's required when courses play like this. And certainly did do the last couple of days. If you're just joining us for the first time this week, I mean, sharp contrast to the conditions today of what they have been. Certainly Thursday afternoon, definitely Friday afternoon, of course, a little bit yesterday. on the back, She's driving the golf cart for Laura Davis at Inverness, one of the vice captains. Australian, but it's always on Team Europe for the Solimes. Now look at that statistic there on your, your right hand side. Seven top tens for Atia Titikan. She's uh, only once finished outside the top ten all year. This is event number ten. It's a chance to share the lead with Ryan O'Toole now. Touch left. It's not much in this one though. Well, it's a round that could be so significant in the fledgling career of Atia Titikan. She has to win to become an LPGA Tour player. And she is a 
at the top now with Ryan O'Toole. Olivia Coe through the back of the 14th. A bit of a depression down there to hit up onto the slope. It's quite green. There's a lot of water that runs down there. So choosing to fly it high. It's the right decision. This is the time for Charlie to push on. Aiming way right on 13, trying to draw this one into the back left flag. in a few more yards on because of that strength of flight straight through the back of the green and this is going to go high off the slope holding out really well still that's 11 under she's hovering just three shots back of this woman Ryan O'Toole par 5 she's got an iron in hand is the landing spot about there any good look at this from Ryan O'Toole well you'll be watching her won't you I mean people will be watching her think she's been out here 11 years and never won you have to be asking why is it taking till now a player that was in the Solheim Cup team as a rookie 10 years ago and right now, in terms of where she is, you, you just wouldn't tell. I mean, the, the mental strength that she's showing, it's, it's looking reasonably easy. So far. She is tied for the lead, although, of course, she does have an eagle putt to come. Here is her co-leader, downhill, par three, 14, Titicum. Pin 12 on five from the left-hand side. Favour the right side. did so but a club short this was significantly downwind the 14th over the past few days and maybe that's catching it out we can see the flag there it's barely moving it's just 161 yards to the front of this green Confused by the uh, the wind here. Firing with Paul Cormack. Well, you can see the flag down there. You're up there, right by the the beach. You can feel the breeze, and then you look down at the green and. You don't see the That's flag moving too. at all. Yeah, that was well, they got it about right. 
on that part. Yeah, coming just off the front edge, but uh, it know. took an age to get to that point. Yeah. Charlie Hull's having to aim here. She says that she loves this golf course because she really needs the imagination and she needed that just then. Well, they pushed the tee up at 17 today, only playing 266 yards. It's been driven here by Esther Henselite. Six under for her round today. And that left for a birdie to get to 10 under par overall. She's had a couple of fourth place finishes in recent months on the LPGA Tour. Another one that's got to be in the Solheim Cup frame, you'd say. Yeah, you would. It just shows us what the leaders are going to face when they come to this 17th. Driver ball, really tough flag though. Jatanagan at the top of the slope, will it come back down? Well, overlooking the uh, Firth of Fourth. Of course, the uh, estuary going across to uh, the other side to on some other great links like Muirfield, North Berwick, of course, Edinburgh is that way as well. Well, they're working hard as a team, aren't they, on trying to get these lines. They're both agreeing as well. Just a ball of movement outside the hole. Just outside the right edge. And again, just with the putt, I mean, there's, there's such a short isn't there when she's striking the ball off the tee her approach shots as well just with the putter it just isn't quite as aggressive quite as positive but it's still a birdie I mean, it's still 15 under it's still superb golf she's six under for the day and she's still the one to catch yeah I was going to say you're still minus six it's a great performance by O'Toole she must have been nervous this morning and has just smiled her way through Sarah Schmelzel makes a putt. That takes her to seven under par. Charlie Hull now for her birdie at 13. Oh, that was important. Really important. She knows she's not looking at leaderboards, but she knows that Ryan O'Toole has just made a birdie. I think her caddy is. So a little fist pump from Adam there. That was a really good up and down. Yeah, really oh important. Still thinking about how unlucky it was to stay at the top of that slope. Oh, Jatanagan's treading water at the moment. It's currently minus 10. Another one really needs to make this. If Charlie Hull did, then she certainly does. Exactly the same score. OK, so that's minus 11, full back from Ryan O'Toole. Yeah, Charlie Hull and Mary Chitanagon. Very similar rounds, really. Both eagled the, uh, the second, both birdied that one. Both a couple under for the round. Both four shots off the lead. Off another one of those. It's Hentelite. 
was the birdie attempt on 17, so she's hit this green in with her drive. Walked off still with a par four. Still, it's a good round, minus six. There's no bogeys on that scorecard today. Yeah, I mean, she'd have taken top ten after two holes this week when she started bogey, double bogey. Yeah, wouldn't she just? Blue high on the 14th. Had the line. It's not quite the legs. Well, there's a hat. You've worked hard on that one, haven't you? We're, we're live on Instagram there, aren't yeah. we? Sweet swinging Lydia Coe. That was a lovely looking shot. That's at the par five. 15th hole. Seen that flag over there, haven't we, a couple of days ago? And that was a very popular finishing position. This read by Norquist. Suggesting maybe a few showers this afternoon, but so far so dry. Nearly had an ace at 14, now to 16, 147 yards today. And another lovely tee shot from the flying Scott Kelsey McDonald. than what she would have liked for her par three on the 14th hole. In the outside right. And pulling it left. Well, second bogey of the back nine for Atia Titikun, making Ryan O'Toole's life just that little bit easier. She either needs to win or earn the equivalent to 40th on the race to CME Globe at the end of the season. And her second place at the LPGA Thailand doesn't count because it was a limited field. It would be the same uh, for an invite for a member as well. She's finished second, sixth, fourth in her three LPGA Tour starts. And of course, she's second right now on the leaderboard here. But it's the uh, Californian, Ryan O'Toole. Event number 228 on the LPGA Tour. Is it going to be the winning one for Ryan Tour? That bogey from Atia Titigan, not obviously on our leaderboard there, but confirmed it will be taking her back to 13 under. It's a two-shot lead. Birdie birdie finish for John Anthony six for a 66. So she's uh, in the clubhouse at nine under 63 course record, of course, from the winner of the uh, match play in Las Vegas earlier this year, Ali Ewing. Four Americans now in the top ten. for Norquist not happening today for the Swede yeah, finished fifth in the uh, Aramco Team Series event in uh, London the Centurion Club and that he called her best finish of the year had a fifth on the 
PJ Tour, but seven under right now is outside the top ten. Well, she smiles even after a bag. Yeah, we had an interview with her, didn't we, earlier this week? You know, she lost that playoff. Oh, excuse me for the sound there. She lost that playoff, didn't she, at, at the Centurion Club? I was talking about Norquist there. And she said, well, there's, there's just next week. And, She's got next week, hasn't she? She's got Carl Moosey. That is a... It really is. Fantastic by Alex. Well, she's not put herself under any stress today, Ryan O'Toole. 173 yards, pin cut on the left-hand side. Loft in hand there. Don't really smash this one. Coming for the front edge and getting the bounce. That's another ball striking clinic, isn't it? From Ryan O'Toole. dreaming of that first LPGA win. Who can deny her? Titican is double back. Mary and Charlie Half calls four adrift of her. Swing by Jutanagan, lucky not to get the bounce. He just pitched in that up slope, whereas Ryan O'Toole missed it to the right hand side. Well, it's always fun watching Lydia Ko try and weave her way around the edge of the greens. Yeah, no. On the down slope. That for Birdie. A time for Charlie Hall. A little twirl of the club. How good is it? Oh, it was straight at it, wasn't it? Maybe half a club short. Time is not on their side, is it, for the likes of Hall and Jatanagar? Ryan O'Toole hasn't put a foot wrong. She's not given them a chance so far today. Did it go for yet another birdie? All well, around, this is seven under she goes for today. She's going seven under, but Rhino Tall in the final group is minus six. And Titican minus five. Fifteenth hole. Really take the corner on on this par five. Bunkers all the way down the right hand side. Just fade one round the corner. Looks to have gone down that right hand side so there are a fair few bunkers it's the shorter way in actually gives you a better look up the green coming down the right hand side it's all about the lie to match the two she had at 14 this is 16 for Kelsey McDonald and turn in Law from the middle of the fairway. Pin to the back today on 18. Well, she played the first two days, didn't she, with Laura Davies? She played last week with Katrina Matthews. She finished top 10 last week. She's just outside the top 10 this week. Do you think she's doing enough to 
least make some noise as far as being back in the Solheim Cup team's concerned? Well, if she gets in the team, she'll certainly be making some noise on Bronte. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a packed team, I think, the, the European side. Beanie's got some difficult decisions to make on those last couple of picks, in, in my opinion, but she's not done herself any harm. The trouble is, she's not had a great last couple of years. But there, there are certainly signs in terms of a, a long game that, that they're starting to turn around. But you're also thinking about the mix in the, in the in the room. You know, you think of Ian Poulter and what he does in the Ryder oh. Cup, and you would see, certainly maybe put Bronte in that bracket. But anyway, let's let's focus on the matter at hand here. By the way, that was three birdies in a row for Marina Alex, Charlie Hulk, and she just find a bit of magic on the greens. Straight back up the slope. You can really afford to give this one a, a good go. And a nice line. Keep your head. Well, it was interesting hearing her after a round yesterday, Charlie Hulls, talking about how she'd uh, approach these things. She, she says she needs a silent mind. The problem, she says, is when she thinks too much. When she won the CME Tour Championship, her last win on the LPG Tour, she didn't look at the leaderboards at all until the 18th. She said she was going to do that today, try and not be nosy, as she put it. Better pace from area, but a similar result. It's good awareness from Charlie. She sometimes was looking a little bit agitated on the golf course in recent weeks and is playing a lot of golf. And if the mind's ticking, it, it wears you out physically as well. So just slowing herself down. I think she could probably have learnt from playing with area the past couple of days just to slow the body and the mind down. Well, Kelsey's uh, short game coach is the uh, pro at Carnoustie. I'm sure she's played there a few times over... The years, the 30 year old from Nam. Yeah. Oh, this is another birdie look for Ryan O'Toole. It's left to right, it's coming off that bank that we can see behind O'Toole. for Ryan O'Toole. It's been a long road. We've seen some of these stories, haven't we, over recent months. Players getting into the winner's circle that have had their ups and downs, the times when they probably felt, am I cut out to win at this level. Charlie Hull, four behind, four to play. Last hole of the day for Esther Henselay. Pin back. On the left-hand side of 18. The ridge and come down nicely. T's been moved up on 16. Lydia Co. Just not quite getting it onto that top tier. countryside closing stages now of this Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open and it's really uh, you feel in the hands right now of uh, Ryan O'Toole from the uh, the early wins in professional life on the second tier the Symmetra Tour to losing a card four or five years ago Schmelzel now It's three birdies in a row. Takes her 
to the 11th spot. Yeah, sun peering through the clouds. It's uh, picture perfect, isn't it? Dumbani Lynx, first time hosting a, a tour level event. Well, you said uh, Sarah Schmelzel's made three birdies in a row. So too is Marina Alex. Here she is, par 3, 16th. Really tough flag just over the top of that ridge. And She's feeling it right now, isn't she? better than that, absolutely. Norquist trying to cut underneath this shot, get some height on it, try and land it over the bunker on 15. You can see Ashley Buhai's ball there, just on the fringe also. He's playing straight down the green here, Titikan. Doesn't have to worry about the bunker on the left-hand side. Just plays straight up this green. given her a chance of an eagle. It was here yesterday the Rhino Tool really made her mark to the top of the leaderboard. Well, that two-shot lead is a putt away from disappearing from Ati Atitikan. And of course, this par five at Dunbarney Links is the Aeon Risk Reward Challenge hole at the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open. In case you don't know, of course, it's the season-long competition across both the LPGA, PGA Tours. Every tournament during the season has an AR risk reward hole. And the 15th at Dunbarney is a reachable par five, dog-like leg left to right, 459 yards. And what well, is how much you want to cut off off the tee? No one really is laying up unless they're in trouble. Let's be honest about it. So uh, the one in yellow that you're seeing, I don't think we've seen too many doing that, especially because it's been playing in general downwind. So uh, up to a, a raised green and a big one at that, 41 yards long. And as we've seen today, the flag is at the back on the upper level. Of course, the players will take their best two scores from each hole nominated and the player on each tour with the best average score will win an equal $1 million in prize money, which is uh, pretty nice. All week long it's been playing well under its par, even in the very windy conditions on Friday. And uh, Charlie Hull, well we saw her make a birdie there yesterday. And uh, every chance she has if she makes another one today that she may join Hyoju Kim and Hannah Green at the top of that leaderboard. Of course it goes all the way through to the CME Tour Championship later in the season. I wonder if we're going to see Shan Shan Fung. She said she was going to retire after the uh, Olympics. We'll see if she's as uh, good as her word. Be a pity, really. Great character. I mentioned Charlie Hull. Here she is. to take it over those bunkers that we can see that first one on the left hand side as you can see Charlie Hull last to hit here and uh, well, that is perfect little chat with her didn't we on Wednesday she talked to us uh, about the bronze medal she won that it's uh, it's gone back to Korea with her sister and taken to her grandparents grave if you don't know her grandmother passed away during those Olympic games that was Bronte Law for her par on the 18th unfortunately that's a five and a drop shot round of 69 girl from Bramall currently tied 22nd on the look for some golf balls. Marina Alex is on the look for another birdie. And she finds it. Four. 
in a row from a player who uh, missed much of 2020, had a, an injury, of course, you'll probably remember from the 2019 Solheim Cup. Esther Henselite back up the hill, 20 feet for birdie. Chances coming in as the German. It's a good round of golf, though. It's a 66, and it's going to be a, a third top 10 of the season in the last couple of months. Well, an orcus went long. You can see a marker there just at the edge of your screen. And View high's come up short, but uh, it's all about Atia Titikun here, isn't it? Because I mean, she's got a putt for a share of the lead. Yeah, after the tee shot, you know, some people thinking, oh, is, is that okay? But only 50% of the field has actually hit the 15th fairway. You get a really good angle in with the second coming from the right hand side. Well, there are moments, aren't there, in a championship? Ryan O'Toole back down the fairway. an incredible chance for Eagle and to tie O'Toole right to left pot down the middle of the fairway, very much in range. Takes it to 14 under again. So many birdies. And eight on the card. Final round trying to win on the LPGA Tour for the first time at the age of 18. I mean, it's extraordinary, but it could have been better. You know, the, the Asian players, especially the Thai players now, it, they talk about it's their dream to win on the LPGA Tour, and it's so close. She's really good friends with Anana Rukan, and that calls her a big sister, and she was so pleased that she won in Northern Ireland to gain her first LPGA title. She's smiling because it, it, it's feeling it inside. It's, she wants it so badly that the, the smile is almost to just try and let out some tension. to eight under pass. She's come a long way in the last year after her lockdown and an awkward. She actually came to Scotland last year. She was outside the top 100 for the very first time since she'd gone into it, into her rookie year. Knocking on the door of the top 50 again now. Of course, she finished top 10 the last time the Women's Open was played at Carnoustie. So she'll be looking forward to going back down the, uh, the East Coast here in Scotland. Buhai's on a, a good run of form also, won last week, she's world ranking 78. We're thinking her game's in very good shape, heading to Canusti also, she's a very good win player, swings it so smoothly. It's for birdie. left side you've really got to that bunker is in play short of the pin he's playing right of it just trying to draw one in around that bunker doesn't look like she's done so it's, it's like an, an annoyingly good bunker you can appreciate the design of the 15th green you need to go as right as possible off the tee She hit a sumptuous second in here yesterday to set up an eagle. That's not quite. 
quite as spectacular, but that will do her on the right level. Have to self an eagle putt. Very good again from the tournament leader. Talk about smart targets in the interview after she played yesterday, and that was one there, ball below her feet. Just started it at the bunker and let it drift off it. Exactly where she needed to be, couldn't draw one there. 17th hole, big move forward today. A couple of tee boxes, only 266 to the flag. Lydia Co. Check this one out. <laughs> Just fades one round the bunker to six feet. Well, she said after yesterday's round she's going to try and stay in aggressive mode that she's been in the last few weeks. I think she's done that. She's got that putt to be nine under for the day. Miles lost the glasses again. It's so hard to get to this flag from the fairway. Christina Kim actually played down the right-hand side earlier in the day with an iron off the tee and then hit straight down this green. Players from the fairway, you're playing across it. You just can't get it close. Well, there is the uh, Women's Scottish Open trophy. Ryan O'Toole closing in. She's got an eagle putt to come at the par 5, 15th. Lydia Coe has an eagle putt to come at the 17th that would take her within one. It's far from done as she tries to win on the first for the first time on the LPGA Tour. They always say the first is the hardest, but O'Toole, well, she hasn't put a foot wrong thus far. box 147 yards in just over a ridge on the second tier into the breeze the 16th. As I say, the number is 147 yards. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like this one. Just stand up there and hit this, yeah? Do you like it? Do you want it? I'm going to try and land it a couple of yards short of that 147 and hope for the skip of the green. Too keen of it for the strike, but it's worked out really well for Buhai. Yeah, outside the top ten right now. Disappointing day when you're trying to win on the LPGA Tour for the first time. Of course, she lost in a playoff last year to Georgia Hall. Now, pin on today at uh, 15, 27 paces. Chitanagan's got all of it to touch across here. When she's uh, come up a little bit short. Well, you've got to hand it to Ryan or two, haven't you, Sophie? I mean, I mean, Tanagan and Charlie Hull maybe haven't had their very Sunday best, but she has. Yeah, she has. They've not come at her, but she started. She was three under three five, Ryan O'Toole, so almost pulled away from them early and they've just never been able to catch her up. Charlie Hall for Eagle. Really needs to give this one a chance, get it to the hole. Go. Come on. Come on. 
tight, but no, it's pretty good. It is pretty good. I she can tap that in a bit closer to O'Toole, but the American has an eagle pot of her own. Too well, was she uh, last week in Spain? Obviously, a little bit of a snivel as well there for Charlie Hull. But Brian O'Toole will have to cozy this one down. Eagle putt at 15. <coughs> and she has it. A rare mistake in this final round. Well, that can happen. <laughs> in don't quite strike it well so we're at a critical moment now aren't we Ryan O'Toole's got a, a birdie putt here to come at 15 not as close as she would like Titikin's got a birdie putt to come at 16 which would take her alongside O'Toole if O'Toole doesn't make and Lydia Ko has an eagle putt to come at 17 that would take her within one and of course Jatanagan and Charlie Hull have their own birdie putts to come on this green it's a really good finish these last four holes Hopefully, Rhino Tall doesn't think that it's only these two players that she's got to worry about. Uh, making her birdie. She'll get to minus 12. While this is all going on, I'm trying to work out who's uh, got the five spots for the, the women from the, uh, from the Women's Scottish Open into the AIG Women's Open. Reveal who my walkings have, have made it in a yep. moment, but obviously need to focus on what is a very important putt for Ryan O'Toole. It's the first one, isn't it, that she's been tentative with. It is still for birdie, but the 15th hole, everybody's been making birdies. You think to yourself on the tee that this almost is a par four, it's playing that short because it's downwind. for a seventh birdie of the round and to get back to a two-shot lead with three holes to play. Right to left pot. Magnificent. That really is a good putt. That is... Vital for Ryan O'Toole, and she takes another step closer to a breakthrough win. Seven under for this final round. Never won on the LPGA Tour, never been in the final group, and is minus seven. Well, suddenly. Titikin has this not to tire the lead, but to get back within one. Drivable 17th to come next. Just outside the right of the hole, 20 feet, putting ac across this slope. It's all falling. Ryan O'Toole's way. Charlie Hall makes it up for as well. And the significance as well over these closing stages, if Charlie Hall finished first or second, she would jump above Sarah Newton and in the, to the automatic spots on the uh, LET points list for the Solheim Cup. Not Sarah Newton and out. 
to share a third now with that birdie. It's a few eyes for birdie pot. Eight feet right to left. day for Ashley Boo High. Certainly different to last uh, weekend. Mm -hmm. And also uh, quite the day that Celine Boutier was uh, looking for as well, but Tita couldn't. Mm -hmm. Is he going to mop up here? Mm -hmm. Indeed he does. Mm -hmm. Well, she could do with a 2-3 finish. We've seen it, haven't we? Anna Ewing's done it. Looking at two, three finishes. That's within reach as well for Lydia Ko. Part one is obviously coming up with this eagle putt at 17. It's the great thing about Lynx golf when the wind does die down. So many more opportunities. It really is the defence of these coastal golf courses. This is a really good pin on 17. It's cut right behind some bunkers. Players are taking it on, and this is for Eagle. It's at the bottom of the slope. So your feet are aiming left, shoulders are left, your face is right. Yeah. Oh, straight. What a two, what an Eagle, what a round from Lydia Coat. She shot a oh. course record equaling 62 <laughs> at the a and Inspiration. Still finished two behind Paddy Tavatanikit. She's heading for a course record here, and she still may yet finish two behind Ryan O'Toole, who is two ahead of her. But uh, Lydia Ko moves into a share of second place as the leader gets ready here at 16. It's 147 yards to the pin. It's 45 to carry that slope, that step in the green that we see when slightly hurting. It's okay. It's good, yeah. Raised teeth, I feel the breeze a bit more. That's your right, sorry, hold on. I'm just wondering if it's enough. Probably playing a little bit for adrenaline in this club selection. It is another Rhino Talk stunning iron shot. Wow, it is exemplary this performance. It's so easy not to quite strike. Strike it when you're feeling it. You can get a little bit tense in the hands and not quite swing as fast at the bottom of the ball. And she did anything but that tee shot. And you, you, you're, you're just waiting for her to, to feel the nerves, but the putt at 15 to make sure of the birdie and then the strike there. She's, this is, as you said before, this you know the flag's just over the. The tier here is not the easiest one to get to, but she's she played it to perfection again. Lovely shot by Jatanagan. These players strike the ball so well that they can hold it at top level. Not 
pretty special from Charlie Hull. But maybe, even with that fabulous tee shot, maybe still it's not going to be enough. Fall back of Ryan O'Toole right now. Two ladies European Tour wins, one LPGA Tour title. She's still only 25, Charlie Hull, but you still feel it's a player who really has the game to win more than she has. Oh, yeah, she just showed it on that golf shot there, didn't she? It's, I don't like to say she's underachieved because she's fantastic. Every girl in Britain wants to be Charlie Hull. So what she's done for the game is amazing, but we'd like to see her win a few more. Titican going for it on the 17th, and why not? Yeah, not a favourite hole. She's had a couple of bogeys here already this week. 300, 232 yards to the front of this green. She's just pulled it left into that rough there. Difficult to get any control. Yeah, they pushed the tee up here. And a couple of tees, so 266 yards. Sophie, you had a, a look at the possibilities of that earlier this week. The 17th hole, they've moved the tee forward so it's reachable. So get your driver out and go for this green. You have to come over the Scottish wall. A bit of fescue and a few bunkers. So there is a risk to this. If you land in these bunkers, you've got that awful kind of 40, 50 yard bunker shot that even us pros hate. But if you miss everything, you've got a chance of hitting the green and making your eagle. So they do co-make her eagle. Of course, Ali Ewing had one en route to her 63. It's just a really good hole because of that, that number you were saying, kind of the, the 266 pin. For the longer hitters, drivers too much, you don't want to be long on here. There's a couple of bunkers and then you're pitching down in the down slope. It forces you to hit three wood. Kelsey McDonald, second shot into the last. So as Kelsey hits here, and, uh, they're going to catch the slope. Come on, keep coming. Oh, just misses it. She will be headed to Carnoustie. I make it Carolyn Lampert, Whitney Hillier, Prima Tamarax, and Heiji Kang will be the five to qualify as uh, Chitanagan's birdie putt. Somehow fails to drop. That's a particularly, I would say, there for Prima Tamarack some achievement as well because she was playing her first LPGA Tour event in two years, got an invite from the sponsors, and then to do do finish it with a 66 and get yourself into the into I think will be her first major. Yeah, I mean it's it's great when you get in at such short notice because you're just so pleased to be there. I mean, good luck finding accommodation for Canoosti. I always used to think that was a nightmare during open weeks. Maybe just say where she is right now. Anyway, back to what could be another huge step for Ryan O'Toole. Well, the partnership was excellent for the tee shot. Working hard on this put also. It's downhill. The trouble is there's not much movement in it. You're going to start looking for some maybe. need to pick your line and commit to hitting over that. No second guessing. Shouldn't have to worry about the pace. I'm a bit nervous. The downhill puts are quite nice. Just need to start this one. There really was nothing in that pot. on her maybe a little further than she would like but shouldn't be a problem remember she has a, a two shot cushion and it's not, not easy is it no it's not Titigan. great you can play it down the left hand side hopefully catch the slope and feed it back down to the hole 
to try and get a decent connection way below her feet. And you're not got much practice from the thick stuff at Dunbarney Links. It's, players haven't really gone into it. The touch <laughs> there was just splendid. It was so easy to leave that short and at the top of the ridge. Do you think she's becoming a fan of Links Golf now? Oh, yeah. We're a fan of her, that's for sure. Charlie Holt. To keep it alive in terms of hopes. Right. And you're going to have to say that... Uh, is uh, the end of her chances. You can't yeah. see her from 12 under. Eagle Birdie should still only get to 15 under. The leader is 16. Yeah. Of course, O'Toole still has to mop up here at the uh, 16th hole. Of course, we'll be back to that in a moment. Kelsey McDonald has to tickle this one down the slope. would have been a great finish for Kelsey McDonald, the leading Scot, this week at a home event. Two ahead, two to play. Okay. Yeah, it's been an excellent week for Kelsey McDonald. in for her partner. Yeah. Sure of the day so far. And uh, that brings a lot of rewards. A 70 that Caesar finishes the leading Scott. She'll claim the Jock McVicker leading Scott trophy. She'll book a place to Carnoustie for the Women's Open as well. So well done to Kelsey McDonald. Another Scots one on the European Tour today, Callum Hill. Eagle pot for Norquist. She needs to Sorry. find the front of this green. It needs to keep turning. Are we calling him up? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is a, a call up hole. There's a little sign on the tee if the players are on the green. Mark the ball, stand to one side and the others tee off, it just speeds up play on these reachable par fours. Well, this is far from a done deal for Rhino Tour, even though she started the day in a share of the lead and she's seven under par for the day, because don't forget, Titikin's got a putt coming up to try and take her to 15 under par. Well, she spoke about not being too aggressive with her lines, but You've got to be tempted here. You've got to. With the tee box being moved up forward too, this really could be a three wood for her. 260, let's just see. What do you reckon, three wood or a rescue? It's Charlie Hull's voice, you can hear that discussing which club. What I'm saying is the players are just slightly in between. You'd love to stand there and go, yeah, this is just a perfect three wood as hard as I can. Charlie will be in between. It makes me think that Ryan O'Toole should have the perfect club. Well, back there in a, a moment with those uh, crucial tee shots at 17. You wouldn't know it, would you, watching Ryan O'Toole today at uh, over 200 events. She's tried to win on the LPG Tour and hasn't been able to do so. Had a couple of third place finishes. That's as good as it's got in those 11 years now on the LPG Tour. But today, exemplary and two holes from home. She has a two shot lead at the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open.
appears they're not calling them up. It's a view height to the top of the slope and then sees it roll down towards the hole. Difficult to leave that foot short, but it's very well judged. Yeah, Anna Norquist has made her birdie there. Now to 18 with Lydia Ko, who needs a birdie to top the new course record. Not the greatest angle in from there, ball below her feet. She's coming from the left-hand side, flags on the left-hand side. Uh, in the scheme of things, the putt here would certainly make things interesting if Titter can, can find the bottom of the cup. It's one of those where there's barely anything in it. It's quite flat where she's coming from. going to have a, another narrow miss. One of the most consistent players in the world of women's golf, Antia Titigan. So hard to keep the putter face square when you're so nervous. Four birdies in a row. It's just a par at 17 for Marina Alex. 160 yards to this back left flag. Trying to catch the ridge. Unfortunately, not to be. I'm way shy. Birdie on 16, view high. A good look here. Is anything like Titikin, she'll just keep it inside left of the hole. Yeah, that just sneaks up back inside the top 10, the South African. Eighteenth green, Alex. Long birdie putt. Right to left. Well, she's going for it. Though, Richard. It's going to go right by that drain. Look at all the divots around that drain. Very popular spot. You see the TV tower. If you can just keep it left of that, you can shoot up the green. The pin is right edge of that bunker. It's a driving iron for Jatanagan. Safely finds the heart of the green. Charlie Hall. Yeah, down there. 
Oh, no. That looked nasty. Just trying to play the high cut in there. Started it a bit too right. It's a bit high, but that's nasty. Well, this is a putt for a round of 62 for Lydia Coat. Tracking. Yeah, really good performance, hasn't it been from the uh, the Kiwi? Currently in a tie for second. Of course, she's had a win and two runner-up finishes already this year. That's of course the third last week at the Olympic Games. It's wary of the bunkers down the left hand side, it's 270 off the tee. Fairway slopes right to left. So we go back up to the green. Marina Alex for par. Yeah, looking for her first top ten of the season. Ah, disappointing drop shot at the last takes her back to nine under which is uh, in a share of seventh position right now just left of the crane in the distance it's perfect it's going to catch that down slope going well, it's not going to be a win, it doesn't look like for Atia Titakun. It, it looks like she's going to stretch a lead at the top of the race to Costa del Sol. It looks like it's going to be a, another runner-up finish on the LPG Tour for her after being pipped at the post by Mary Jitanaga in her homeland. Well, Lydia Coe heads to Carnusti in the best of form a superb finish a 63 a course record equaling 63 14 under and the new clubhouse target she won silver of course in rio but it's fair to say sophie she's a very different player to the one that went to the olympics in 2016. yeah she is she kind of fell away from the game really had some struggles it was so easy for her as a youngster and uh, people did question you know will she come back because it was a real fall it was kind of Jordan Spieth like that's the way to describe it and we've seen him come back this year in style and everybody's been cheering for Jordan it's exactly the same with Lydia Ko she's such a nice girl Rano Tour taking a free drop from the drain gets the one club length she's trying to keep it as far right as she can be having to chip over that bunker. I'll we'll see how she's feeling right now. It's normally is a chip shot up the slope, I'm trying to catch the left hand side and then run it down. Or she's a bit nervous, she might put this. Quite a steep slope, actually. It reminds me a bit of the 17th at St Andrews, the way that bunker is so well positioned. Well, it's uh, it's been a journey, hasn't it, for Ryan O'Toole? Today, it's it's looked like plain sailing. Of course, the job isn't done yet, but player who breezed on to tour found herself in the Solheim Cup team why you can't why you can't look at it so how does it look like she's going to play this one then Sophie looks like she's Plenty of loft in her hand. It's about a 35-yard shot, so she's looking to land it around 20, 25 yards. Okay, 
about a touch low. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. Those tight lies are not fun when you're jangling. Well, more fun than jangling. these. I was going to say more fun yeah. than these lies, though. It's a good job she's right handed. Might have to play a bit further right. Yep, right. But there is a slope that will kick it to the left. Hero Seve, and that was Seve esque. It's going to be another near miss, isn't it, for, for Charlie Hall? But I've got to say, it's been great fun watching her the last month or so. It really is. She's so natural and just goes for everything. It's a great way to play golf. Well, this is an eagle putt. Just looking to stop it at the top of the slope and then let gravity take control. Great speed. Oh. Up there. Nice up on Great Well, Ryan O'Toole. Had never been in a share of the lead going into the final day before. She'd been in the final group before early this year. But she uh, shot a 77 in the final round. Maybe something like that has provided the experience that's helped her along the way today. Quite often that happens. I remember Melissa Reed when she got her win on the LPGA Tour. That lost one to Georgia Hall, really, then week before. Do you see it straight? Yeah. I have a feeling it's going to hold it that way. Okay. You may be, if anything, inside right? What? Yeah. Keep it inside. Right? Okay. Well, a two-shot lead's lovely, isn't it? But if you can give yourself a three-shot cushion, Heading down the last one, even better. It might 16, doesn't need to worry about the pace. This is all downhill. <laughs> what a performance from Ryan O'Toole. One hand on the trophy. has been magnificent from the 34-year-old American. You know, you dream of going out there and winning for the first time, but to go out there and win it in this kind of manner. Charlie Holt to get her birdie and get to 13 under. Yeah. It's all about Ryan O'Toole, isn't it here? Nice birdie from Charlie Holt. The game suffered over the years. The missed cuts in 2013, the lost card in 2014. And now on the verge, at last, of a victory. 132 yards for Titikan into the 18th. An excellent shot. Thirty-four. Ranked one hundred and eleventh in the world. All right, one more hole. One more hole. Job done. You want to go again? Knows a winner when he sees one. Yeah, Ruby the dog. 
See, I know that one. How do you know it's Ruby? I know the owner. Likes her dogs, though, doesn't she? She does. She's got four of her own, one of which is bizarrely called Bogey, which, I don't know, she hasn't had any of those today, which is good news. Maybe that's why Bogey's the dog. You don't make any bogeys on the course. Look at that three-shot lead for Ryan O'Toole heading down the 18th. Victory at the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open is almost hers. Seen some great rounds, haven't we, today? Those 63s from Ali Ewing, who's uh, going to be assured of a Solheim Cup place. Lydia Ko. And uh, great news as well for the likes of uh, Whitney Hilliard. Another good week for the Leona Maguire as well. Yeah, are all trending nicely going into next week's Women's Open at Canoostie. A couple of US Open champions there, the last two, finishing at four under, Aileen Kim and Yuka Sasso. Good bounce back by Emily Pedersen today, 68 after a poor round on Saturday. Yeah, 67 from the ANA Inspiration champion, Paddy Tapatana, critical shy and night, finished in a share of second place here last year in Scotland. Not standing that playoff won by Stacey Lewis. It's not the most intimidating of final holes. The fairways are wide at Dunbarney, and when you're trying to win your first LPG event, that's exactly what you want. You know, aim it at the bunker on the right-hand side and swing it hard. Beautiful. Well, they say beautiful back on the tee. I have to say, I can't remember her hitting a shot that wasn't in this final round. No, she's been... Phenomenal, I would say is the word. Minus eight, you're in the final group. She'll just learn so much from today. The confidence that she'll gain being in this position and actually, well, hopefully pulling this victory off. Twenty-five to carry over that bunker. Tanagon just turned it to the left. The fairway kicks down right to left on the 18th. Just a tough angle to get at that back left flag from there, though. Eleven o'clock. Can I play like a little fade down there. The rehearsal, she said fade, the rehearsal of the out to in downswing. To carry the bunker on the right hand side. Oh, what a lovely walk this is going to be for Ryan O'Toole. So, 
losing round. Disappointing day for Ashley Buhai, of course, with high hopes at the start. Of it. Not sure even a Sunday best would have been enough, given what uh, Ryan O'Toole is doing in the group behind. Of course, Ryan O'Toole walking down this 18th. She can watch on down, suck in the views. Soak in what she's done out there today. And a Norfolk fortunately has this one for par also. Miss the green to the right. Uphill left to right. with a bogey and uh, also back to eight under par for Anna Norquist and 70 from the Swede today and they'll wait for another LPGA Tour title goes on but for a while today it looked like it could be Atia Titikun's day especially when she birded five of the first seven holes yeah, it could. A couple of bogeys on the back nine has cost her, but she's got this for birdie. So this will be for second alone. Right to left. And that's been a nemesis, hasn't it? That's been the length of putt where she hasn't hold enough. I think 17 and 18, she's missed it on the right-hand side, and that was a right-to-left putt, so maybe she's just opened the face up and, and pushed it. And it's important. She finished second in the Thailand event. She finished sixth, the fifth, I should say, at the Evian Championship, fourth at the ISPS Handel World Invitational. Now it looks like the share of second place here Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open. She needs to earn the equivalent to 40th on the race to CME Globe to not have to go to Q Series to get her LPGA Tour card. Of course, tied second here, she'll easily stretch her lead at the top of the race to Costa del Sol standings. But again, 10 starts and uh, nine finishes inside the top six. It's remarkable, including a win, don't forget. Yes, including that win, and she just seems to be up there all the time. It's not It's not like she's sneaking top tens. She's contending. Yeah, sharing second with uh, Lydia Ko, of course, uh, Charlie Hull and Eric Jatanagan, if they can finish with a birdie, would also get into that share of second place. Aiming way right, trying to draw one into that back left, left flag. to be aiming quite a long way to the right. Just, just too much there. here isn't it all about her achievements over this final round started in the day in a share of leave with Charlie Ho and of course this lady area Jatanaga hundred and fifty yards got no angle here it's got to land at least one forty talking about a two-time major champion. We're talking about Charlie Hoa. Solheim Cup star. She's outscored them both by four shots going out with them in this final round. 
would be pretty apt if she finished it off with another classy ball striker. That is a great shot. All day, it seems like she has got her approach inside the other two players. She's the one that's been putting the pressure on them when we all thought it was going to be the other way round. What a walk, what a moment for Ryan O'Toole. The spell where she could hardly make a cut. The time where she lost the tour card. The long road back. The 227 previous LPGA Tour events all culminating in this at the home of golf. She must have wondered, Richard, if it was ever going to happen. It would have come easy for her in the early days. You mentioned how she was a pick for the Solheim Cup. And, and then sometimes it just doesn't fall your way. She works very hard at her game. It doesn't always mean you're going to get the victories, but when you do, enjoy them. golf tournament yeah I said yesterday ball striking wise she was the best player around on the course and there's Gemma who's looking very emotional it's her soon to be wife they're getting married in four months she's got champagne at the ready she knows what Ryan's been through she knows the journey it's taken to get to this point oh, the family and friends they they're on the end of the phone when things are going bad they you know, it's the tears of the sadness of lonely game golf and friends and family it's great to celebrate with them but you need the most when you're really struggling look at this putt for Charlie Hall it's massive down the hill there and it'll start sweeping round to the left She's never been the biggest fan of Lynx golf. Charlie Holt never had a top 10 at the Women's Open. She'd never had a top 10 at the Scottish Open as well before today. So it'll be some encouragement for her ahead of Khan Husti. Yes, it will. So that she really likes Dunbarney Lynx. And I think Charlie needs to go with that attitude more to golf courses. And if she doesn't like them, then, you know, pretend to like them because her golf game does hold up anywhere in the world. Chitanagan looking to get in that group at minus 14. Straight back up the hill. Can she get it there? Yeah, Friday night you thought she was the one to beat, didn't you? Three shot lead. Even... Last night, in a share of the lead, she was probably the favourite still. But she hasn't had her best. A round of 68. A good week, though, for Eric Jatanagan. Finishes in a share of fourth place. As long as Charlie Hull pops hers in. But I'll tell you how good this performance is from Ryan O'Toole. This is not only to win, it's to equal the course record at Dunbarney Lynx. It's slow, but she can afford to be positive. A three shot lead uphill right to left. Come on, give it a chance. Not to be, but it is to be, isn't it? That's what matters most can step away and I'm sure feel the emotion. It's the relief. That's what it'll be. It'll 
start thinking about all those times, all those missed cuts, waking up on a Saturday morning just feeling rubbish, going to the practice ground on the Saturday afternoon when everyone else is out there playing and you're grinding, thinking maybe next week, and then next week comes and it nothing yeah, happens. Week. Going back to Q school. Sure, Mum's watching as well back in uh, California. I know she told Brian the other day she thought the golf course looked like she was playing on the moon. <laughs> she loved it. Charlie Hull to finish off for her part. Uh, pity. Not the final round she would have hoped for. But uh, lots of encouraging signs for the English Solheim Cup start. Take her back to 12 under par, fifth place. But the long road to victory ends in Scotland for Ryan O'Toole. And here comes the champagne. A year which you'll get married. A year in which she becomes an LPGA Tour winner. No. Oh my God. She is the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open champion. <laughs> And 28 LPGA Tour events, and finally in the winner's circle. Ladies and gentlemen, the TV flash prize presentation will be taking place in five minutes and will be located on the first. It's going to be some wedding. Please make your way over there. Well, fashion. there's two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars that's just gone into the uh, budget. Oh, thank you, girl. It's all worth it. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's all worth it very much. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, freaking awesome fun, girl. Thank, thank you, you so much. Good job, Mike. I think my yeah, well done to Michael Curry as well, the caddy. Also, Jorge Parada, <laughs> who's been with her along the journey as well, the Spanish coach. She's been with him since she had pain in my ears. 2014. You don't mind, do you? You don't mind having champagne in your ears, your eyes. And it's, a, it's, it's been a stellar performance, a 64 to do it like that. It's been dominating and they've just never looked in doubt. I've got to say, it was so stress-free. She hit the ball the best today and to play in that room with Charlie Hall and Aria de Tanagon and say, I struck it better than you two. I played better. She hit it closer than them. It was quite remarkable. What a way to win your first LP. You know, people will look at Ryan O'Toole and they'll see the talent. And the talent's so obvious. It, there'll be questions why it's taken this long, but listen, it's there. This is it. It's the moment. All the adversity, the roller coaster ride. And that's why you put the hours in. You know, I, I was at Killeen Castle when we all you know, raised our eyes. Rosie Jones picked her, and of course, it, she didn't get beaten at that Solheim Cup. She'd only had two top tens on the LPJ Tour, and she was plucked, it seemed, out of nowhere by Rosie Jones. And of course, she was involved in, after the weather delay, wasn't she, in that match against uh, Caroline Headwall, where she was two up with two to play, came back out, and then didn't get the point, and it proved very costly. Yeah, there was a few of those, those turnarounds coming down the 18th hole. I remember Headwell hitting the most gorgeous shot into the back edge of that green. Yeah, that's all history. That's 10 years ago now. That's how long ago Ryan O'Toole was uh, bursting onto the scene. But 
This is what she'll be remembered for now. A closing 64 to win her first LPGA Tour title in her 11th season out on tour. She is the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open. A closing 64 to win by three. Celine Boutier tied seventh. That's going to do no harm for her Solheim Cup. Open for Katrina Matthew to pick her. Yuka Sasso, she's not really played too much Lynx golf. And I spoke to Justin Leonard trying to get some experience from him. Moves on to Canoosti next week. There's Kelsey MacDonald, the top Scottish player, tied 15th in her home event. Tavitanikin, 67 for the ANA Inspiration Champion. And Cheyenne Knight, who came onto that 18th green to celebrate with our winner. This page has a few Solheim Cup hopefuls Nana Madsen, Madeline Sagstrom, Mel Reed. Need a pick. I thought she'd be okay after that win at the LPGA last year. As a harder moon off. There is our winner, Ryan O'Toole, the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open champion. Final round of 64 to win by three. And look at the caliber of player that she has beaten. Sophie, no, no one's going to come away disappointed in some respect, are they? Because one of the co-leaders has gone out there and shot 64. You, you, you can't be. You've, you've got a number in your mind when, when you go out there to play. Like Lydia Coe's like, well, I'm just going to try and shoot course record and see what happens. She's just done that. Titikan had her chances, but I wouldn't say she blew it. I think Jutanagan and, and Hull would have liked to have put a bit more early pressure on Ryan O'Toole, but that start by O'Toole, three under three, five, it really did shut the door. Yeah. <laughs> Facetiming her mom. Well, she's landed on the moon, hasn't she? Oh, thank you. oh I know, I smell, it tastes like champagne. <laughs> what is that? Is it it's a, a whippet or a, um, it's a whippet? Great, a whippet? Yeah. Oh yeah, my she God, loves her dogs. Love. <laughs> yeah, she loves you. Oh my goodness. She's got Thank four of them. Welcome. That lady's not careful. She might have five. <laughs> might be a Scottish Terrier next, isn't it? It's got to come in after winning in oh, Scotland. Thank you very much. Well of course. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. That's, That's nice. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Photos with the marshals. <laughs> She's got to get her first trophy yet. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Wait. Appreciate it. No, I mean... We, uh, you know, we'd been watching her the last few weeks. I saw her at Evian. She was knocking on the door of the top ten there. The same at Galgon Castle at the ISBS Hander World Invitational. She managed to get a selfie with uh, the man of the moment at Modest Golf. Yeah, got the selfie Niall with Horan. Niall Horan. 34, she's a bit old for One Direction, yeah, but we all did it. Listen, yeah. She we had a really good um, performance in Northern Ireland on the wrong side of the draw. You wonder if she had the right side of the draw, what could happen, and that's what she had this week. Yeah, we're walking their way to the first tee where the presentation is uh, going to take place. And I'm sure she dreamt of it last night she would have 
No what an opportunity awaits her, being in a share of the lead for the first time heading into the final round. Yeah, and if someone has said you're not going to have anything worse than a four on your card tomorrow when you finish on Sunday afternoon, I think she would have been like, wake me up, I'm dreaming. Not a bogey on the card going out in the final group trying to win your first ever LPGA event. It's quite incredible. of a, a lifetime of 11 years of trying all the uh, photographers gathering around the first tee of course there's a, a trophy to be picked up as well by uh, Kelsey McDonald as well as the the leading squad and don't forget five players made it off the leaderboard into the AIG Women's Open as well Prima Tamarax, Heidi Kang Carolyn Lampert Kelsey McDonald and Whitney Hillier. So congratulations to them as well. I hope I've got that right and I'm not announcing your name and I've missed someone else along the line, but uh, that's how I worked it out. This, there you go, there is the Jock McVicker leading Scott trophy handed over by Paul Bush of, from Visit Scotland to Kelsey McDonald. Kelsey, a quick word if you could come to the mic for us, thanks. No, she doesn't. She's not there? I'm just... Okay, okay sorry. Thank you. Well, congratulations to Cassie. She also gets a, a week-long training trip to Truffs Golf's uh, Thailand base. And there is Dr. Prink singing up, handing over the trophy to Ryan O'Toole, the champion. At the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Thank Open. Thank you. Ryan, you last won on the Futures Tour in 2011. Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> Going to start with the other obvious one. How does it feel to win your maiden LPGA title? Um, it, I, I can't even describe it. I mean, I've been obviously working my whole life for this. I've been dreaming about it since I was a kid. Um, you know, I just feel like at 10 years now coming in going wondering is it ever going to happen, when's it going to happen and I just feel like this year's been very much uh, kind of aligning, things are falling together and I just was trying to stay patient and wait for my time. The outpouring yeah, emotion there on the 18th green as the realisation hit you, is that a culmination of all those years of hard work? I, I, I believe so, I still think I'm in shock, I feel like the tears are going to come later when all quiets down, I feel like just I'm, I'm more excited and more happy and just, you know, I just the hours spent, the grind, the, you know, the heartache that this sport brings, um, constant travel, I just feel like I just for this moment, I, I hope that it only happens again and again. You haven't led a tournament after round three, I mean, you looked in complete control throughout today, how did you keep all that pressure away just to perform at the level that you did? Um, you know, I, I, I haven't. You're right. I thought about that last night. I have to say I was kind of nervous last night, uh, trying to keep myself occupied, um, stay away from my phone a bit. Um, but, you know, it's just um, my friend Cheyenne, she reminded me of, you know, just staying in the process and in the moment, you know, do what I did the last three days. Um, I, I have never been at the top coming into Sunday. I've always felt like I've been chasing. So, um you know, it was a different feeling, but at the same time as, you know, playing with a good group, Charlie and Araya, I just felt like I really, you know, I just stick to the, you know, try to keep up and see where things fell, um, try to keep pressing uh, while just sticking to my game plan. With those players that you mentioned and Lydia as well, sort of breathing down your neck in the groups behind, how important was that birdie on 15 and then your tee shot on 16? You know, I, I tried to not look at the leaderboard. I tried to just trust in my caddy to... Um, you know, kind of guide me to whether we needed to lay off or get aggressive, um, stay patient or whatnot. I, you know, it wasn't until 18 that I saw that Lydia was, you know, not far off. And um, I kind of could tell that when I made the birdie on 17 that there must have been some sort of gap. People were cheering and I was like, okay. <laughs> were you following the game plan that you, you told me about yesterday, just one shot at a time? That's how you're going to approach today? I had to think about what I even shot um, on 18. I Once I looked at the board and I was like, oh, okay, I'm eight under for the day. I was like, 
let's try I want to make this to break my tournament record so just for playing I've only had eight under I would like to hit shoot nine under but um I no complaints here just a short, short journey, journey to Canoosti now for next week's tournament dare you dream uh I you know what one shot at a time as good as I can um I do want to say thank you though to Trust Golf for making this event happen um without you guys we wouldn't be here um for Dunbarney Links, you've set up a wonderful golf course uh, for only a year old. It is in fabulous shape. And, um, you know, I, when the wind was up, I was super excited to play a Lynx golf course that had wind and exactly what I anticipated and wanted to happen. So thank you to you both. I just, I, I wouldn't be here without you guys. Um, I do want to say thanks to my sponsors. Um, Holiday and Clove Vacations has been with me forever. Um, they've you know, I just feel like uh, PXG, Bob and Renee Parsons, you know, big supporters, my new sponsor, Peloton. Um, and I and I just feel like with them, without them, you know, without that support, the constant year after year, me trying to chase my dream, them constantly believing me, never giving up. I want to say thanks to my parents. Um, they've been there since day one. Um, and, you know, t to FaceTime them when I got done was just unbelievable. And then my, my fiance, Gina, I just, you know, to have someone here with me on this day I had always dreamed of winning and at least having you know someone close like here with me to sh share it so I'm thankful for all of you guys to come out and to be a part of this and thank you well, thank, thank you, you. And, and, and enjoy congratulations from all of us thank you you can take it home you can take it home with you it's yours now Brian Three of you, right? Just gonna grab onto this. You know, for being in Scotland, I can't drink out of this. Mm -hmm. She very well, didn't she? <laughs> and as you said, the, maybe hasn't struck you. You could hear the wobble in her voice there when she spoke about her partner and some of the people that mean so much to her in the journey along the way. Start of the day in a share of the lead, Sophie, and I mean, she came out firing. I mean, birdied the first two holes and, and, and didn't let up thereafter. Did not laser iron into the seventh, the par five, to the heart of this green. And there were others out there making good scores, but to go out there in the final group and produce that kind of performance, she said she'd never, you know, reiterating what we'd said earlier, never been in this position before. I thought it was interesting that she said she was nervous last night. She didn't mention about it this morning. It was almost like she talked it all the way through with her friends and family and then came out today and just went for it. Yeah, so uh, four birdies in the first seven holes and it's a really good example of the ball striking prowess from Ryan Tool in this final round. Look at that at the ninth. In high on nine, the pin cut way left in a bowl. And this was a tough putt to read. Everybody has missed it right, but not Ryan O'Toole. So out in 31 and, and leading the way. Got through the tough stretch of holes, 10 to 12. And this was actually for Eagle on the 13th. Just cozied one down there. Yeah, she was caught by Atia Titik and they were in a share of the lead at one point, but Atia threw in a couple of bogeys at 10 and uh, at a 14 as well. So Ryan was keeping them at arm's length. Lydia Ko was making a charge as well. She left the first putt short, didn't she, for Eagle? But that was, that, that was the moment I thought, that's it. She's not going to lose it from here. No, you're right. And she had a two-shot lead. And this birdie pot made it three. You could say the, the noise from the crowd, she knew this was quite important. She wasn't looking at many leaderboards, but if she did, she had a three-shot lead walking down the 18th. I thought it was going to be apt if she could knock in the putt for birdie, but I mean, who cares really? 64, and let the celebrations begin. Would it have ever have happened, I'm sure. Well, she said she thought the same. Worked really hard, nothing out of the game, and then a week like this happens. It's a dream. Well, there you are, confirmation. Uh, 64 for a three-shot victory for Ryan O'Toole. A win and three runner-up finishes now this season. For Lydia Ko, Atia Titikun, well, she's going to feel disappointed, Sophie. 
for her fans on the Ladies European Tour. It does mean she at least sticks around until the end of the season, unless she wins next week's AIG Women's Open. Exactly. Uh, she's the current leader on the race of Costa del Sol, which is the Order of Merit on the Ladies European Tour. And she's just been such a great addition. She won when she was just a teenager as an amateur in Thailand in our co-sanctioned event and we've enjoyed watching her grow. We know she's going to go to the next level on the LPGA Tour. She's a stunning golfer and a lovely person. Yeah, she's a superstar already. Uh, congratulations to her and another excellent week. Charlie Holt, well, again, cementing the form that she's been showing and she uh, makes her way towards a fifth Solheim Cup appearance. And looking at that top 10 as well, yeah, let me know getting closer I'm not sure of course uh, on those Rolex rankings permutations but she'll be getting closer to Jennifer Cupcho and of course that uh, 63 today from Ali Ewing will certainly secure her place in Pat Hurst Solheim Cup American team but yeah it was Titican despite obviously Lydia Coe's fine efforts it was Titican who who looked the likeliest to deny Ryan O'Toole got off to a hot start she had this on the seventh yeah just for birdie number five oh. of the day oh. Gino as they said as she's named she's got a little fan club out there went out in 31 yeah bogey 10 oh. that was a great save for par on 12 yeah after picking up a birdie at 11 she was sticking in it. This was in surely two at the par 5 13. Showing a touch of class with that lob shot. Did, if anything let her down, it was just, I mean, she obviously rolled that one in, but it was that length of putt that, where she just couldn't quite find the, the regular strike that she needed. Yeah, you would say, despite Round a minus six, she did leave a few shots out there. And this was one of them, 14, heavy handed with the chip. So came out the toe, Miss Low left. It was a bogey on the 14th. Got lucky down the right hand side of 15, but that actually opened up the green. You could avoid the bunker and access his back left pole location. Yeah, and if she could knock that in, you thought, okay, game could be back on. That putt there was to tie the lead. But she never really looked like making it. Look how short she was with the birdie attempt. And it's hard to be too critical of an 18-year-old who goes out and shoots 66 in the final round to finish tied second, isn't it? Yeah, she looked like an 18-year-old there. Another decent week, isn't it, from Jung An Lee Six? And of course, uh, a memorable week for those that uh, you know book their place at next week's Women's Open as well. Yeah, five spots available, and everybody knows that going into this week. So I have a good week. I can book my place at Carnoustie next week which is just down the road, ideal for these players. Maybe tomorrow off and then head down. Tough golf course, that one. Yeah, mouth-watering proposition there. Ryan Tour will head there as an LPGA Tour winner. Major champions on that page, though, isn't there? Harry Jatanagan and John Handley, six. Good rounds there. Whitney Hillier, that's 65, booking her place in the Women's Open. Another solid week for Leona Maguire, certainly one who uh, will feel she's got an opportunity next week. The last two US Open champions, Aileen Kim and Yuka Sasso on that page as well. Disappointing day, I suppose, for Ashley Buhite particularly after the high of last week. There's Kelsey McDonald, the leading Scot, and of course another who uh, has booked her place down the road at Carnoustie. 64 from Manon DeRoy, her best round of the season. 
Emily Pedersen, decent fight back after yesterday's disappointment. Another one who will have a week of what could have been. There's Haiji Kang, that's 66, good enough to book her a place, along with Prima Tamarax as well. Around a 72 from the tie, who's been playing on the Symmetra Tour this year. Now, the last time someone from the Symmetra Tour went and played the Women's Open, we watched the Sophia Popoff story, didn't we, from the uh, the RNA online this weekend? Oh, what a story that was, a fairy tale. Well, we've uh, seen the course record tied today. Lydia Ko and Ali Ewing, and as I mentioned, Ewing, that, that guarantees now she's going to be on the Solheim Cup team. Earlier, she spoke with Robbie Brooks. Ali, uh, very well played today. Uh, another new course record. Uh, talk us through the round. Yeah, it was uh, really solid. Um, I felt like the conditions were going to allow for a little bit better scoring um, today, so... Uh, Making the turn at four, four under, um, dropping a shot at ten, and then getting it back on pace and uh, shooting nine under sixty three was a lot of fun, um, and it's certainly a good feeling to capitalize uh, on the the last round leading into a major. Are you aware as you're moving up the the leaderboard? You know, you've, you're putting together such a good score. Yeah, I mean, we have a few leaderboards out there, so I was able to see uh, kind of where the leaders were at. Um, but yeah, like I said, I felt like there were the conditions are yielding probably lower scores today. Um, so I just wanted to go try to post a number. Um, I definitely it's not going to be enough, but um, still a great great round and a lot of fun. I mean, eagle birdie finish. There aren't many of those on this course. That must be the icing on the cake as well. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, uh, putting in a good round right before going into the British Open um, at Carnoustie. I'm really excited. I think my game's in a really good place and. I uh, can't wait to see Carnoustie tomorrow. I bet she can. What a season uh, it's been for Ali Ewing, the winner of the uh, the match play. <laughs> she beat Danielle Kang, Erich Tanagan, and Sophia Popoff on the way to winning her second LPGA Tour title. I'm sure Pat Hurst, very pleased to see her so up her so home cup. Second appearance it will be for Ali Ewing. Yeah, she'll be delighted with that. You want somebody that's on form going into that Solheim Cup. And that match play on the LPGA Tour does just open up a few ideas. It's just seeing how people cope with that one-on-one -on -one style of golf. Yeah, to beat three major champions on your way to winning it, you're going to feel good about taking on anyone, aren't you? So, uh, player in the top 20 of the world, Adi Ewing, taking further strides thanks to that 63. But, of course, it, it, it's all about Ryan O'Toole, isn't it? And... Um, it's kind of in the name, isn't it? She she has all the tools to her disposal, hasn't she? You, you look at that ball striking, you, you look at the way she plays the game, and you do, as I mentioned here, question why it's taken this long, but I suppose better late than never. Yeah, and, and you never know now, you know, 34, she could start winning a couple of times. But the standard on the LPGA Tour is, is significant. It's really high level golf. So. You look at Ryan O'Toole and think, why is she not won? And that's because of all these players that we're looking here, that they're, they're winners on the LPGA Tour as well. And it was great, Tita Green. And you did, you said, what would she be like on the greens? And you know, every question that was asked of her, she just hold that pot. And brilliant, absolutely fantastic round of golf. Of course, not everyone was here, Danielle Kang, but there's a number of players who have shown some form this week that have them excited heading into the final major of the season. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Lydia Cove was my favourite this week. She looks so good. Just got blown off the golf course on that Friday afternoon. But they'll all be coming to Dunbarney thinking this was a great preparation for next week at Canoosti. Yeah, it's been a, a new venue, of course, for the uh, women's Scottish Open, and I think you can all agree it's been a fabulous setting, stunning scenery, and uh, what a performance at the end of it all at this Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open from Ryan O'Toole. We've got another week to look forward to on the east coast of Scotland as well, of course, with the AIG Women's Opens coming up. But congratulations to the American. Ryan O'Toole is your champion from all of us here. Bye-bye for now.